closer to heaven. Welcome to Word Explosion with Rev. Simon Ampafo, Head Pastor of Grace Falls Chapel. Do you need direction in life? Are you yearning for a closer walk with God? Are you desiring to be fruitful? The Word of God provides the answers. Based on God's Word and let the grace of God envelop you as you listen to this life-changing message. Be blessed. Isaiah 43. All right, let's start. We'll, We'll end somewhere. Everybody, can we go together? That says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. All right, he makes a way in the sea and a path through where? The mighty waters. Who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together and they shall not rise. They are extinguished. And they are quenched like a wick. All right. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. The, these people I have formed for myself that they shall declare my praise. Amen. I think we, should, we can end here. Bless you. Please be seated. All right. Behold, I do a new thing. Somebody say, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Can you not see it? Behold, I'm teaching on something very unusual, I know. Anakazo versus Anazao. Somebody say, Anakazo. Versus Anazao. All right. Greek words, but we can break it down. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Anakazo means to take it by force. All right. Somebody say, I take it by force. Oh, come on. Say, I take it by force. Okay. Anazao means a revival. Somebody say, revival. All right. So, which is which? That's what we're talking about. But I want to start from this interesting scripture. The Bible says, Behold, I do a new thing. Can you not see it? Do you not perceive it? All right? And I need to start by letting us understand God is always doing a new thing. The key is for us as children of God to be able to perceive what God is doing and to flow with him as such. All right? At every season, God is about something. It's your duty as a child of God, to find out what God is doing in every generation, in every season, in every time, and to flow with the Spirit of God and allow Him to do what He wants to do with your life. All right. But my, my emphasis tonight on this particular verse is the methods. Somebody say the methods. All right. The method God uses to achieve his purpose. I notice that God's methods are different from our methods. And God's methods are not the same all the time. All right. God is unchanging, but his methods and procedure for doing things are always changing. All right. That is why it's very dangerous to place God in a, a what a box all right you miss him completely because for every season god operates in a new way and in this particular passage that we just read you will notice that god seemed to suddenly change his method or modus of operandi what he was doing with the israelites or what he did with them in egypt 
was different from how he was going to operate with Isaiah and the prophets of old. God suddenly shifted and changed his method. I want us to look at that quickly and I'll go to my main subject matter. Look at verse 16. How God saved the Israelites from bondage. All right? He said, I made a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. So when God was delivering them from bondage, remember the Red Sea was there, and God actually created a path in the Red Sea, all right, and then made a path through the mighty waters. That's how God saved the people of Israel. But now he says, I do a new thing. And it's different. The way I'm going to operate and I'm going to flow is different from how I did with the people of Egypt. Now look at verse 19 and see the new way God was going to operate. Now I do a new thing. Shall you not see it? I will even make a road in the what? Wilderness. So this time, God is creating a path in the wilderness and rather bringing rivers in the desert. So in the former move of God, he was creating a way in the sea. But rather this time, he is bringing rivers in the what? In the wilderness. That's God for you. He moves in different measures. And that is where we need to be careful to understand how God moves and flow with him. So there is a place, what I'm driving at by this story of this particular passage, is that there's a time for God to use an akazo to operate, to get results. And there's a time for God to use an azao or revival to get results. Now, if you look at these two terminologies, they may look contradictory because an akazo is the use of force, all right, to push, to use force, a certain measure of force, compelling power to get results. But an azao is when the Holy Ghost takes over and it's like a revival. God steps into the situation and does it his own way. Amen? And so if you look at both methods, you are quick, you can quickly say it is contradictory. And that is how most people get confused with the operations of God and the principles of God. It's always different and sometimes appears even contradictory, but it's the same God at work. Hallelujah. And This evening, I want to give you a few examples for you to see how God operates. All right? For instance, in Hebrews chapter 8, you will notice that God talks about the old covenant. He said, in the old covenant, I picked them from Egypt and I held them by the hands and I took them to the promised land. I carried them on the wings on my, on, my, on my shoulders and brought them. But under the new covenant, he said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write my laws in your mind and in your heart. A complete different method. So God sometimes, the way you operate in the Old Testament is different from the way you operate in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there were sacrifices, gold, sheep. In the New Testament, our sacrifice is different. So you must understand every season the method for which God uses and operate or flow with God in that line in order to get maximum results. Hallelujah. All right? And I'm saying that some of these methods are contradictory or they appear contradictory, but it's the same God operating. And you must know when to use which method to get maximum results. Behold, I do a new thing. The way I did the first thing is different from the way I'm operating now, but it's the same spirit, the same God. Am I coming through to somebody? All right. So can I give you a few more examples? For instance, faith and works. Faith and works. Now, sometimes people think it's contradictory. 
there are people who are faith people and there are people who are works people and sometimes you find them in opposition they think oh i'm a i'm a faith man i'm believing god to marry i'm believing god for a breakthrough i'm believing god oh god will come through for me i know a man who used to tell me that he's going to start a church. It's going to be a very powerful church. And God has told him, give him the name of the church, give him the vision and everything. And he was waiting for money to start the church. And I said, if God has given you the vision, why don't you start? Just begin it. He said, oh, I'm just trusting the Lord. The Lord says somebody's going to bring money to, to, to give me, to buy instruments. I said, you don't need instruments. Start from your hall. Put three chairs there, invite people, and begin. That is faith in action. Can you believe this gentleman kept believing and believing and believing until he died? The church was never materialized. Very sad story. Did God lie? No, but he had to put his faith in action. Sometimes when the year starts, you see people, as for this, I'll marry. Oh, I'll, I'll, by faith, I'll marry. You don't even have a bed. How are you going to marry? How are you going to marry? Put your faith into action. So in Hebrews, uh, sorry, James chapter 2 verse 40 coming, he said, said, look, tell me your faith and I will show me your faith and I will show you my faith Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Hallelujah. You've got to put works into your faith for you to get results. But they look like two opposing things. But it's the same God operating. The faith must work, and the works must work for it to work. For instance, when we're starting Grace Fields, we didn't even have a meeting place, but we started anyway. We're meeting on the field. And, and hiring a conference hall every Sunday. But we, we believe God has spoken, and so we took a step of faith. And God has honored it. So there's a place of faith, and there's a place for works. The same thing with grace. Grace does not make you lazy. The fact that God's grace is upon your life and grace is going to open doors does not necessarily mean you should not do anything. In fact, if you are lazy, grace will not work for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 10, he said, it is by grace. No, no, before that, that's Ephesians 2. But 1 Corinthians 15, 10 says what? I am what I am by the grace of God. And the grace was not without effect. Yet I worked harder. I worked harder than them all. And yet it wasn't I. It was grace. So notice the guy says, everything I have and everything I've accomplished is by grace. And yet I put myself to work. Balance. Balance. Hear me, everybody. I think one of the greatest problems in the body of Christ is the lack of balance. Lack of balance. There are people who run with grace, and because they believe in grace, they are very lazy. And you will continue to be poor. And you will not understand, because grace has its place, but grace will come upon your words. God will bless the work of your hands, my friend. Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Very powerful scripture. That explains this seemingly contradiction. But very important. I'm setting a tone to come to an Akazo and an Azawa. Don't worry. Just follow me. For, look at this scripture. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is what? A gift of God. So grace is the gift of God. It's given. All right? Verse 9, it's not from, not by works, so that no one can boast. Beautiful. And most people will stop there. Not by my works, so that I cannot boast. It's grace. It's grace. Look at the next verse. Verse 10. Everybody read. For we are his, God's handiwork, 
created in Christ Jesus to what? Do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So actually when grace comes, grace prepares you to do good works. Oh, I thought somebody would clap to the Lord. It prepares you for good works. It prepares you. The grace gives you the capability and the power and the ability to put yourself into action for you to get maximum results. Hallelujah. Amen. So these spiritual methods seem contradictory, but rather they are complementary. And every child of God must understand this. Otherwise, we confuse ourselves. How about healing and medicine? No, in the past, we've had churches that the, the faith movement, which Pentecost came out of, I don't know if you know the story, the faith movement, they believe so much in supernatural healing that they will not go to the hospital. Because I have prayed and I believe that God will heal me. But as much as it's important that we believe in supernatural healing and the fact that God can heal. I mean, two weeks ago, we were here doing communion. When somebody online took communion in the house and God is healing immediately and dressed up for church. That's the power of God. That's what faith healing can We believe it total. Yet we also believe in the, the wisdom of God he has given to doctors to, to do medicine, to apply cure. And even in the Bible, before King, uh, is it, is Hezekiah was healed, I mean, when he said he was going to die, and he said, I've added 15 years, he said, prepare some pottery, pottery and, and, and boil and drink it, and then you'll be healed. After three days, you go back to the temple. This is God. Applying medicine. So what, what kind of faith or what kind of healing that says, I believe in supernatural healing and not, not medicine? There's something wrong. When we were young, we used to argue about power and wisdom. I'll never forget this argument. And some people say, I believe in power. So you, you find the, the, the Archbishop Duncan William Fans. Power is everything. Then you see the Dr. Otabo fans. Wisdom is everything. Yet Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, both works together in Christ. So yes, power, but also wisdom. Yes, prayer, but also the word. They, 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 they committed themselves to prayer and the word. I'm reading a book by Dr. Uh, Ora Roberts, the late Ora Roberts Sr., and he, he's giving a very interesting story about when he started a healing movement, and he began for many years healing the sick all around the world. Then suddenly the Lord said he should build a medical university to train doctors, and the whole America rose up against him. I thought you were a healing prophet. I thought you, are, you, are, you could heal by supernatural means. Why are you building a medical center? A lack of understanding. Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm teaching about the balance between an Akazo and an Azao. The balance in the body of Christ. Too many things we must find balance. You pray, but you know the word. You work, but you tap into grace. Grace for the work. If you don't have balance, oh, a false balance is always an abomination to the Lord. If you go to work and you are not working, you are praying and reading your Bible, you'll be fired. And when you are fired, don't blame your boss. You are doing the right thing at the wrong time. A lack of balance. Hey, am I helping somebody today? All right, so today I want to talk about the place of Anakazo and the place of Anazawo. You know, when we talk about Anazawo, and I've been teaching about revival for some time, and people can believe God, and I say it comes by hunger. 
So people can pray. I believe in God for a revival. God will come through for me. God will do a miracle. It's great. And God does come through. God does visit his people and take over and do wild things. But there's also a place for anakazo. To take it by force. To push and compel yourself and others to align with the will of God. Don't just stay in the place of waiting on God to do everything. God is in partnership with man. Can I speak to somebody here? We are in partnership. I'm saying we are co-laborers with God. Why didn't God stay in the heavens and save the world? He sent Jesus, man. I'm sure when Mary was giving birth, they said, push, push. Before Jesus came, there's a place for Anakazo. And there's a place for the supernatural workings of God. And God works both together. Both together to fulfill his purpose in our lives. Lift your hand and say, I'll give myself a push. I said that one comes by holy anger. Holy anger. Anakazo is by holy anger. You get angry with the situation. You get angry with the status quo. And you say, I've got to do something and change the status quo. I cannot remain like this. Things cannot continue like this. If you do not get angry in your spirit, you cannot enforce change. That's why there are revolutions. When things are going haywire in the country, sometimes there must be a revolution. So that the nonsense will stop. Although it comes with consequences. That's why Jesus would take the, the, the whip and drive people up. Anakazo. Effort. It has its place. Then, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yesterday I was telling them, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says that, for eyes has not seen, neither has heard heard, the, the things God has in store for those that wait for him. You come into the New Testament, the same scripture God says, for eyes has not seen, neither has ears, and neither has it got occurred to the heart of men. The things that God has in store for they that love action. You can't just wait, you must also put action into it. Am I teaching somebody something? So there's a place for Anakazo. And God wants us to come to that place. And let me show, share something with you that's very interesting. This morning I was sharing it at home. One day David was old and was about to die. He called his son Solomon and said, Solomon, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man. Solomon, you cannot be a weakling. Put effort into your life. Be pushed. Show yourself to be a man. Life is not for cry babies. Rise up and take responsibility. You cannot do daddy, 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 daddy. I'm about to leave. You've got to do something with your life. Show yourself a man. Be strong and act. Compulsive power. Push. And Solomon grew up, became a strong guy. And Solomon began to employ people by force. Wow. The day I saw that scripture, I was very surprised. The wisest man. May God give us wisdom. Look at him in 1 Kings chapter 9. Look at Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 15. Here is the account, watch this, of the false labor King Solomon conscripted to build the lost temple. Wow. He put people into forced labor, especially people who are not known Jews. He, he anakazo them, come and work for the temple of God. He, he virtually anakazo them, come, come and work. The wisest man. How many want to be wise? Yeah. Very interesting. And King Solomon conscripted. The word conscript is to compose really what? Bring, engage. Compose really recruit. 
You don't have an option. Come on, come, come on, come on, get to work. And these were non Jews. He brought them in. Listen, it's time for the church to anacazo people into the kingdom. We must bring them in by force. Oh. It, it looks some way, but that's what Solomon, that's what the wisest man did. And that's what God wants us to do. We must learn to give ourselves a certain push. Another word for anakazo is biazo. Somebody say biazo. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violence and the violence take it by force. I'm provoking you to take your destiny by force. I'm provoking you to rise up and change your story by force. Hallelujah. Enter by force. The guy conscripted. Look at verse 20. There were still people left from the Amorites, Hittites. Are there people left outside there that we must anakazo them in? Yes. Um, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These people were not Israelites. Look at verse 21. Solomon conscripted the descendants of all these people remaining in the land. It was by force. Lift your hand and say, wise people take it by force. Oh, say, I will take my throne by force. Thank you for listening to Word Explosion with Rev. Simon Ampofo. We believe you've been blessed. For more life-changing messages, please make a date with us on Love FM every Friday morning at 5.30 a.m. We invite you to worship with us at Graceful Chapel, Ahonjo, some meters from Lametto Hotel and directly behind Chariset Hotel. Our Sunday service is at 8.30 a.m. and our midweek service is on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. For more information, please call 0552-505083. Email us at admin at gracefuls.org or visit our website www.gracefuls.org. You can join the Reverend Simon Amperfo page on Facebook. You can also follow Grace Chapel on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you'd like to support this broadcast, you're welcome to do so. Please call us on 0552-505083. Or you can send your monetary support directly to 0244-263882. God bless you as you do so. It's your season of grace. It feels